What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So Leo Juicy, if you're new to my chin. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my herb collection. This is a video that I really hesitated on filming. So I've kind of been in a place of limbo recording this video because I'm not a certified herbalist yet. And I didn't want to mislead you guys by showing you guys some of my herbs. A lot of these herbs are very powerful. Some of them are not for pregnant women. Some of them are not for people who have certain type of illnesses. So I was kind of hesitant in that respect, but I am going to go ahead and show you guys and reference the books that basically taught me everything about, which I'll go in more depth in the video. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a very basic run through of the herbs that I have in my collection and share some of the information that I've learned along my journey. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Herb, ashwagandha. This is an herb that is commonly used for male testosterone, libido boosting herbs and things like this. But this herb can also help balance and boost your cortisol levels, which is basically your stress hormone. This herb is commonly used in pills for stress or anxiety and things of that nature. It is an antiviral, anti-inflammatory, antidepressant, and it is an adaptogen. It helps with, once again, like I said, it, your cortisol levels, your anxiety, cancer cells. It's great for your thyroid, for stress, and it's also an energizer. The next herb is blue vervain. Blue vervain to me is kind of like a happy herb. This really uplifts my mood. This is also great for women who are breastfeeding because it increases the milk production. This is obviously something that you would wanna consult with your doctor before buying and using, but it also is an anti-inflammatory. Like I said, it is kind of like an happy herb, so it helps relieve stress, anxiety, restlessness, and it also boosts your immune system. The next herb that I love is my maca powder. Ma maca powder is something that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of. Maca powder is used for things like gaining weight, increasing fertility, increasing your sex drive, and it also is great for after workouts. It is an antiviral and anti-inflammatory. It hits immune boosting. It's rich in iron, copper, potassium, it's also known as an adaptogen. It increases your fertility. It helps you gain weight because it increases your appetite. It's also used as a libido booster. It's also great to balance hormones and also great for people who are going through menopause. This was probably my first favorite herb, which is Damiana. I love me some Damiana. It is an anti-anxiety. I would reference my personal experience with this herb as another happy herb. Um, this is also an herb that a lot of indigenous people use to go into meditation as well as before ritual ceremonies they would take this to just um, just um, to activate their crown chakra and just to be guided by their spirit guides through meditation or rituals or whatever type of practices that they're doing. This is an anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory. It boosts your sexual organs and it definitely will have you feeling a little saucy. It also boosts your sex drive help with breast cancer and fibroids, menopause, it balances your hormones, it increases your libido, relieves anxiety, constipation, depression, sexual dysfunction, and it's also smoked for meditation. So yeah, it's a happy herb, a boosting herb. I've noticed that a lot of the herbs that you take that might be for sexual dysfunction or increased libido, they also kind of relatively, in my experience, they increase your mood. Um, when you think about sexual dysfunction or um, um, in, in my experience, in my experience, this whole video is in my experience, but when I think of increasing my sex drive, I kind of put that on the opposite scale of basically boosting your mood, boosting your creative energy and boosting your overall energy. So that's just my experience with a lot of these libido boosting herbs. Um, but yeah, this one was definitely my favorite when I first started. Complete OG herb, which is going to be the iris sea moss. I'm sure everyone at this point has heard about if you guys are into any type of holistic, natural, alkaline, holistic lifestyle. As you guys know, iris sea moss has 92 out of the 102 minerals that the body needs. This is something that I can take daily. It's an antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory. It's super high in iodine, iron, potassium, vitamin B, vitamin C. It's great for your thyroid. It removes mucus from your body, your joints, for your skin. It's great to uplift your mood, it increases your libido, and it's great for hair growth. My next herb, which is a very, very, very powerful herb that you wanna use very lightly, is neem powder. Neem powder is great because it's great for your skin, it's great for eczema, it's great for any type of burns that you have or any type of blisters. It's also great for hair growth and it also balances your blood sugar levels. 
This is also an herb that indigenous people use to abort. So this is an or herb that you want to be very careful with using. And um, more information on those type of herbs were obviously going to be in these books, which I will explain later. The next herb is chaparral, and this herb is wild crafted. So there's two type of, or there's three different types of herbs that you can get. You can get organic, wild crafted, and just the regular herb. So wild crafted basically means that it's found in its native place place and it's not necessarily organically grown but it is naturally grown organic is obviously goes through different certifications of becoming organic and it's organically grown and then you kind of just have your sustainably grown herbs and then you have your herbs that are grown by farmers so it kind of just depends on what you want obviously i opt to go for wild crafted or organic herbs if i can but if i can't and i get it from a, a place that is sourced from high quality farmers and it's been tested in a lab and it shows its potency then i have no problem with going there this chaparral is wild crafted it is a antibacterial antiviral anti-inflammatory anti-tumor anti-cancer and it helps kill parasites it addresses std issues this is a dr sabi herb in which he used to cure a lot of sexually transmitted diseases it's also great for eczema it's also great for your respiratory system and for colds and bronchitis this herb y'all it smells like it smells like poison but it's really good for you this next herb is yellow dock root and this is an organic herb this is an antioxidant antibacterial anti-inflammatory it's great for purifying your blood it's also good for your lymph system this is also a herb that people commonly use for stds for acne for eczema for your skin it helps cleanse the blood so any herb that helps cleanse the blood from what i found is going to basically clean everything else inside of your body as far as making sure that you have great skin increasing hair growth cleaning your blood gives a great foundation for the health of the rest of your organs to work properly and in a safe and healthy way and this herb right here is tila or linden this is an organic herb and it is a anti-seizure anti-inflammatory anti-cancer antioxidant it's great for boosting your immune system this is what i like to categorize as a relaxing herb something that i would probably take at night um, because it relaxes your nerves relieves depression it, it's also great if you have problems going to sleep it also helps reduce headaches and migraines and fevers and things like that this next herb is an organic or this is actually a wild crafted herb and this is elderflower elderflower is also linked to elderberry which i will get into later in the video um, but this is an anti-inflammatory antiviral it's an anti-cancer and this is great for colds for flus for allergies it removes mucus from the respiratory system because it is linked to elderberries so it kind of has the same type of properties it's also great for menstrual problems it's great for your skin it's great for low energy and it also enhances dreaming and infertility and this next herb elderberry with also the elderflower is basically the same plant just different parts of the plant elderberry is notoriously used for flus for clearing and cleaning uh for clearing and cleaning out any type of the mucus in your respiratory system you can actually make a syrup out of this and they sell elderberry syrup in the stores but obviously when you're making it you know it's fresh you know exactly what's going into it and you can make it at your disposal if you have it in your cupboard this is an anti-inflammatory antiviral anti-fluenza and an anti-cancer i'll actually go ahead and make a full video on how i personally make my elderberry syrup myself this is an organic herb and it is a heavy metal cleanser. It's anti-cancer, antibacterial, and antioxidant. It is also great for your kidney stones, cleanses the cells. It's great for diarrhea, for constipation, um, for stomach pain, digestive issues, and it's also good for acid reflux. This next herb is dandelion root. This is an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant. Cleansing the blood relates to helping clearing your skin and basically giving your body a great foundation to start off with improving the health in other areas or specific areas in your body this also is great for digestion disorders and it has been said to help with people who are suffering alzheimer's disease this next herb is ginger root but this is an antiviral anti-inflammatory so ginger like everyone knows is great for your digestive system it's great to reduce inflammation in the body menstrual pain arthritis and improves blood circulation and it helps relieve stress this is something that we use in our cooking all the time and it's also great to be used as a tea. Next is mugwort. So I personally use mugwort if I want to have very clear intentional dreams. This also is great for 
mental problems, fatigue, depression, if you can't really sleep well, anxiety and things of that nature. A lot of people also use it for cramps, for diarrhea, for constipation, and irregular periods and other menstrual problems. This herb right here um, had me going through some things. This is the sacred, this is sacred bark. This herb is a laxative and this is what I meant as far as not wanting to give you guys information to possibly cause harm in your body. This clears you out, clears you out, cleans you out. And according to the book, you're not supposed to use this for more than seven consecutive days. This is an antiviral, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory. Said that it helps with hemorrhoids intestinal health it removes gallstones restores the mucus lining and health of the intestine this is a serious herb and you want to take tiny dosages and you do not want to exceed seven days pal darko this is an antibacterial antifungal anti-cancer anti-candida this is great for diabetes this is also great for a yoni steam this is also great for joint pain asthma boils and wounds the next herb is cat's claw. This is also a herb that is great for yoni steaming. It is an anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antioxidant. It helps with HPV outbreaks, including a viral infection such, such as herpes and HIV. It's also great for Alzheimer's disease. It's also for your joints. It's also great for parasites, for leaky bowel syndrome, and it increases your white blood cell count and digestion. The next one is sage, and we all know about sage, you know? Daily saging is a must, but a lot of people might not know that you can consume sage and you can eat it. You can drink it as a tea. It has a lot of health benefits as it cleanses the energy around your house. It also will cleanse the body and the soul. This is actually great to improve your memory as far as treat any type of menopause symptoms that you're having, diabetes. It helps nourish the pancreas and it is a great relaxing herb to have smells amazing it looks like this and it's ground up so you can easily make it into a tea or even season it um, with a lot of the food that you cook this is an anti-anxiety antidepressant this herb is going to be great for sleep disorders anxiety nervousness headaches it also helps strengthen the uterus and it also helps with exhaustion red clover has become one of my favorite herbs this is an organic herb it's an anti-cancer it's a diuretic it's an anti-inflammatory and it helps release, relieve any menopausal symptoms that you might have. It's a blood purifier, it breaks up calcification, it cleans the lymph system, and it's also said to be good for your chi cheese. It's good for your breast growth. Hydrangea root is the next herb, and hydrangea root is a anti-inflammatory, it's an antiseptic, antiparasitic, and an antiviral. It's great for bladder disease, kidney disease, it helps clean out the lymph system, and it's also an energizing herb. Bladderac, we know bladderac and sea moss are paired together to get those 102 minerals that you need in your body. Bladderac is also a form of a sea vegetable, a seaweed. It is an anti-tumor, antibacterial, anti-candida. It's super high in iodine, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. This is great to treat any type of thyroid health. It supports weight loss, hair growth, iodine deficiency, skin, arthritis, joint pain, digestive disorders, heartburn, and it's blood cleansing. This is a daily herb that I take and it definitely tastes like the ocean, but it's nothing, um, it's nothing a little lime can't fix. And it's just a quick shot. A quick shot, you got 102 minerals, you're good, you're good. Immune system is boosting, you have energy, sacral energy is in a prime position to create wonderful things and it's actually something that after you do it for a period of time, you actually enjoy doing it. Getting that taste can be a challenge for some people. Black seed, according to Alkaline Herbal Medicine, this is the cure-all seed. This is not a Dr. Savy herb. This is a antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti-diabetes, and anti-HIV. It's great for headaches, for toothaches, as well as anybody who has asthma, arthritis. This is a great herb, it's super potent. Some people also re reference this to black cumin. This is also herb that you can actually season with. What I actually like to do, because they are tiny little seeds, is I'll just take a bit of these and I'll actually sprinkle them on a salad. Really good, very strong taste when you swallow it. You kind of feel like, not like pepper, it's not spicy, but you feel 
the intensity of this herb. Another OG Dr. Savy herb is burdock root. Burdock root is an antiviral, it's an anti-fungus, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antibacterial. This is a blood cleanser and it's also one of the first herbs I realized really was clearing up my skin. Hops. This herb stinks y'all. Like honestly when people walk past my herb collection, like you can smell, <clears throat> you can smell this even when it's like closed. This herb, it doesn't, it doesn't stink. Like my mom says it smells like feet. Um, <laughs> It doesn't, it has a, a interesting smell. I don't think it smells terrible. I don't think it smells like feet, but it does, definitely doesn't smell good. This is a herb that is antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. It's an anti-cancer and antiviral. This is a herb that is actually commonly used to basically calm the nervous system, calm your nerves. It's used for people who have ADHD. It treats infections. It's also great for sleeping through the night. It's also an anti-anxiety. This next herb is sarsaparilla. This is an herb that they actually use to create Dr. Pepper. And if you smell it, it actually smells a little bit like Dr. Pepper. This is an anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, antioxidant. This herb is known to bind with toxins for the removal. And it's great for your skin. It's great for acne, joint pain, eczema, headaches, cold, and sexual impotence. The next and final herb are fennel seeds. Fennel seeds are an anti-inflammatory, antibiotic, antioxidant. It's great for, it's high in copper, potassium, calcium, zinc, manganese, vitamin C, iron. It is said to improve your eyesight. It detoxifies the body. It re reduces stress. Fennel seeds is also something that a lot of people have in their cupboard for seasoning. A lot of these herbs I like to take in teas. If it is a root, an herb that's more dense and heavy, then what I'll do is I'll actually take it and I'll boil it. Um, but if it's like a leaf or if it's something that's a thinner consistency, I will boil the water and then put, wait for the water to boil. I'll put the leaf, the thinner, the thinner herb into my tea kettle, turn the water off and let it just simmer. If I'm kind of combining a root with something that is a leaf or a flower, then I will boil the root, let that boil for anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes. And then I will then put the flour in to the teapot and then I will let it sit and simmer. I actually do like my teas to sit overnight because I like them to be super potent. You're basically able to extract all the properties from the herb and you're able to get that into your tea. So I like to actually make my tea at night and then in the morning I'll just heat it up and then I'll have it and I'll sit and relax, meditate, do things like that. If it's a powder, it's something that's easy to put into smoothies. But one thing that you have to be really careful about is you need to make sure that you're giving yourself the right dose. These herbs are super powerful and what actually taught me a lot about herbal medicine is this book right here. This is Alkaline Herbal Medicine. It's to reverse disease and heal the electric body. This is a book that I actually got from Amazon. He also has a alkaline plant-based diet book. To be honest, I didn't really read much of this book, but this book right here was a rabbit hole of obsession. I immersed myself in this book. I really like this book because it tells you what herb it is. And then for example, this is elderberry. It tells you like the Latin name of the, the book. And then it tells you kind of all the properties that the herb and the benefits that the herb has. And it will also tell you a general dosage amount. What I also appreciated about this book is it also noted that some of the some of the herbs are not for people who are pregnant so for example the nettle is not necessarily for women who are pregnant and they should consult with a physician the cascara is also something that he he cautions as far as not going over the recommended amount because it could cause actually damage to your damage to your liver and it's also not people who are pregnant because it can also induce labor so you don't want to do stuff like that. Also, some of these herbs are so strong that indigenous people actually use them for abortions. So getting this book is something that's super important. And I honestly don't even feel comfortable sharing all of this information with you guys without you guys having guidance from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. So this book is super essential in my learning about herbs because not only does it tell you about the herbs that I picked up, but it also tells you about different ways that you can make the herbs. So this, for example, will tell you how to grind the herbs, how to grind the herbs, how to encapsulate the herbs. It'll tell you about children's dosages. It tells you everything, to be honest. So this, er this book is super important in my knowledge, in my learning of herbs. 
And then the new book that I got is from somebody who I actually started watching a lot of their videos on YouTube. And then he mentioned that he has a book. So I bought the book. This book is more like basic information about the herbs. It doesn't necessarily tell you about the dosages, but also for people who are not really knowing what they need, it's a great way to kind of see like, okay, I need more antiviral herbs. Okay, this is an antiviral, this is not, this is, this is not. So this book is kind of like an entry level book as far as just knowing the basics about the herbs and things like that. This is also a book that I recently got maybe like a week or two ago. So I haven't really given a deep dive in the book, the herbs that I have in my collection. I also have pills. And you can actually put the herbs into pill form. These are the pills that I get, and I get these from Simply Wholesome. This is on Slauson and Overhill in LA. A lot of people know about Simply Wholesome because it's a place that Nipsey Hussle used to go to. It's a black owned, black ran, black circulating dollar health store, grocery store slash restaurant. And it's in LA and it has a whole bunch of herbs. It doesn't, it doesn't have loose herbs like this, but it has them encapsulated form. But this is basically my entry level basic on kind of like the herbs that I kind of use. I will continue to make more videos on how I use the herbs, what concoction, what dosages and stuff that I make. So I'll go ahead and get into more of those type of videos later on. Holistic healing is something that I'm really passionate about and something that actually feels natural to me. Not necessarily natural because they're natural products, but it feels good it feels good getting up and making tea just to boost my energy or just to have those daily minerals and things like that so i'm definitely going to explain i'm definitely going to share more about some of my daily regimens with you guys but go ahead and put some suggestions down in the comments and if you guys take herbs or you guys are into herbs or you guys have things that help increase your energy or help with depression or help with menstrual issues periods bleeding fibroids, I don't know, fertility and things like that, go ahead and share them because I'm sure a lot of people are interested in those healing properties from those herbs. But yeah, this is a long outro. I will see y'all in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.